Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all keeping well. If you can see some flickering going on here, it's because I have my advent calendar, my candle alight, um, and it's just about to reach the one for the first of advent. So very exciting times, and it's really bright, but very quickly I had managed to rescue this rather lovely piece of ribbon from around it before the wax got to it so you'll probably be seeing this again at some point anyway what is this about and this is our inspiration and it's from George Brock he executed this in 1949 it's called the bird and it's lithograph on paper at the moment it's going to be a tote bag or a bag um, not necessarily tote, the front of the bag, but you could do a front of anything you wanted. Not really good. Now, I'll just explain at this point, this task is no good for your nail varnish. So please excuse my nail varnish, but um, as I say, it just isn't any good for nice, shiny, uh, beautiful looking nails, which mine rarely are anyway, so I'm not that bothered. Right, so the frame is a picture frame. Glass removed, backing removed, of course, and this frame, particular frame, measures 13 inches by 17. Okay, now this is a nice size that I want. It will actually go that way. Ha, ah, I didn't think I could get that on the screen. So that is how it will go. The warp threads, the long threads, will go this way. All right, I'm going to dress it with the warp threads. Now, I've explained this before. The easiest way to remember warp and weft is this way. I'm going to write it down. The warp threads, um, make sure it's not important. The warp threads, oh, I'm doing this sideways. Warp, we. Warp threads go down, and the weft threads, which are the threads that you are actually going to weave. Let's see if I can do this sideways. Weft, how that, how's that looking? So the weft threads go across. Okay, easy way to remember it. So because I'm going to weave with bits and pieces of cotton fabrics, mostly from my son's shirts, I need... I need a strong warp thread. All right, now I'm going to make my warp thread from some wool. Um, I'm going to mix the red and this one. This one's really nice. It has a silver thread going through it. So if I can find the end, let's, there we go. Now I'm just going to do some. What, what we used to call at school finger knitting because we did this with our fingers it's just a chain and if you haven't got a crochet hook don't worry it doesn't matter you can actually do it with your fingers but I'm going to do do it with this and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing but I imagine that everybody knows how to do this if you don't, it doesn't matter because it's quite easy to do you could actually use your threads like that if you didn't want to go to the trouble of, of making a chain you could just just hook them round and run them backwards and forwards in pairs I do I do recommend you do this in pairs if you're going to use a heavy fabric because as I said the warp needs to be um, substantial to hold the amount of fabric that I intend to squeeze on so all this is you wrap this round your crochet hook or your finger and you're just going to slip it off like so one hold it hold the end twist it now you can do it that way where you put the hook round the thread that you're holding here oops like this and it is so easy once you get into the hang of it thread over slip through thread over slip through 
and that is all you're doing if you find that too easy uh, um, difficult you can do it that way um, right I've got to think now how you do this this way where you do it manually with your fingers just pull that over okay just pull that over but you'll get into the hang of how to do it now you'll need to do this so it's long enough to go round each one so you need it from whoops from that side Whoa, over to this side That's can't so get it on the screen cool it round here so it doesn't come undone and I might possibly hold that down with a little bit of sellotape when I finish right I've knotted that now and that is quite that's quite firm so I'm going to take it round here round the back across pull it nice and tight and then down we go round number two nice now you're going to do that all the way across until you've got to the last one now there are actually 30 warp threads because it goes down and then it comes back so each run is two warp threads so that makes 30 okay now next thing to do I'm going to use this ruler here and I'm just going to start weaving with the ruler so I'm going under and over, under and over, under and over, all the way across. What's that? Under, over. I'm just going to pop that along there, like that. Now I've just sat and I've cut some of these shirts up into strips. You might have recognised some of these from the stocking, the Christmas stocking. I think we used maybe those, a couple of those. I've added some more um, I don't want it too green or too dark so I've added this this is another one of my son's shirts and it's really pretty and I didn't know whether to cut it up or not but he did give these to me to cut up so um, there you go I'm going to right now, now lift the ruler up like this and this will make it easy to get the first row in at least okay so I'm just going to pop that all the way through all the way along you don't have to put the ruler there you can do it individually under and over under and over but just at the minute it makes it easier to do it that way so there we are now if I drop that then you can see that that is perfectly woven just move it along when you um push that into place with your fingers or something that is called beating so just beat those down with the pen you can do it with the fingers or a fork or something just to push it down now now I'm doing this in strips because that's just the nature of the length of the shirt but you might do it in a long strip so if you had a really long strip that you could turn back you would just turn this back on itself now now it's finished over so you would turn this back and go under so if you finish over the next row will be under so this is what you're doing all the time you're going under and over under and over at the end it's over so the next row will be under so what I'll do now I'll take another piece of shirt I think I will use the ruler just for a while it makes it so much easier to do it this way so the ruler now is going under and over so now I'm going to just take that through as well through there pull it right the way through Whoa. couldn't do that if it was much longer I'm remove the right that, I'm going then. to beat this down so beat it down you can have your strips as thick or as narrow as you like you can alternate them bearing in mind our elements of design thickness contrast thick against thin 
So there we go with the first two. And you can see here we have ah there. I can do, I'm going to take that out because, just there because I've missed, I've gone out of sequence there. But it won't matter further down, but at the beginning it just stabilizes it or it makes it a bit stronger if you keep the weaving just in sequence just along the edges to start skipping um, warps at the moment going over two or over three or um, start working out of sequence just going to maybe weaken it a bit along here which will make it difficult when it comes to removing the weaving from the frame and here's the finished piece now as you can see there are areas that have thick thicker fabric strips and then set against those with thin thinner strips but when you're doing this do be really careful not to pull the sides in now the edges here i've just turned the threads underneath and tacked them down first of all i knotted them and then did a tacking stitch right the way across to get this nice straight edge i'll just show you on the other side what i did um, i specifically left this to show you so it's nice and taut, the weaving's actually taut. Now all I've done is in pairs, just knot them, just loosely tie them together all the way down the, the side. So I'm going to start with two a pair at the, the beginning and then just keep tying them in pairs till I reach the end. Once this has been done, trim off the, the straggly bits of warps and then turn your frame over and we're just going to now sew those down with a tacking stitch and all I've used is one strand of thread in a very sharp needle, quite a long needle as well. And I've turned it round to suit me and I'm going to tack all these ends down now so they don't stick out while we're making the uh, constructing the bag now as soon as you've done that finish off secure it at the bottom and then turn your weaving over and uh, you can see there's a little thread hanging there but that doesn't matter um, and you can see how good it looks and how neat the edges are but as I said do be careful make sure that you don't pull in the threads otherwise you'll end up with a waste so I've now gone back to the source of inspiration for the design and I'm now going to enlarge these and cut them out in fabric now the fabric that I've chosen is um, from here it's the shirt fabric and it is this now it was debatable whether I used a plain colour or not but I thought no I want to give it the real boho look the the clutter the patterns quite exciting colourful look so that is why I am doing pattern on pattern however there are a few rows oops a few rows here of plain not very many it has to be said that one there um ooh and one there yeah so not very many at all um, but um, I'll deal with that as we go on as you know it takes its own form and it will grow and develop in its own way this is just a progression of an idea we don't actually know at the moment how it's going to pan out but anyway so that is the fabric I'm going to use for this I have interfaced it now as i've explained before if you look at these there would be very very awkward to cut out and then interface so i feel at the expense of wasting a little bit of interfacing i find it's easier to interface a piece of fabric and try not to get too much waste but to interface a little bit of fabric and then cut out I just it works for me so there we are that's all ready so the next thing I'm going to do is cut these out now I've already done a brief sketch from here 
and as you can see I've made it quite a bit bigger um, there's no no um, prizes here just but they're just basic shapes all I'm going to do is cut them all out now and I'm just going to place them here just pop a pin or two in not too many just to hold it it doesn't matter if it slips if you don't get the shape correctly this is just for inspiration it's not to be copied slavishly now you might notice I've cut the feet off here um, for the same reason as I like to interface this now I cut the feet off because they were so fiddly I can't I don't know where they are now they're on the table somewhere I'll actually sew the feet in by hand I think that will be better than just trying to fussy cut around them so what I'll do now I'll spend some time and I should just cut these out and then place them on the weaving right now these have been cut out and I'm just going to set them down I'd like the bird in the middle I think because it's big and then balance them with the star now at this point I'm going to have to be very very careful that the pattern of this doesn't get lost in the pattern of the weaving now um, I might cut out some more f some more stars and fish or another way around this is to actually place them give them a border and now I could give them a border in felt another fabric or I could outline them hmm yes so I'm going to have a think about that for five minutes and then I shall get back when I've made a decision <laughs> oh goodness perhaps I should have done these plain after all but we'll see we'll see I'm not changing it I will live with um, live with this and run with it and um, let's see how that turns out I've decided to put the shapes on different colors of felt um, and these are the colors that I'm going to use now I've already chosen and cut this color for the fish so I'm going to pop that on there now I have obviously got to cut the felt shapes larger than the actual fabric shapes because if I don't <laughs> we're not going to get the border around the edge there so after I've done that just place the fabric shape back and then that is going to be slow stitched all the way around the edge now I won't give you a demonstration of slow stitch because you all know how to do that now it's just a simple running stitch no big shapes about slow stitch I mean we used to know it or I should say I used to know it as um, running stitch and suddenly in recent years everybody's gone crazy with this slow stitch and um, it's just running stitch even reduced to <laughs> reduced to even a lower form tacking stitch um, but anyway it is coupled occasionally or sometimes with mindfulness and that is where I think it comes into its own um, living now in the present don't worry about yesterday that's finished don't worry about tomorrow you just think about now but anyway so slow stitch that will be slow stitched all the way around the edge on all the shapes now if you can just see that it's a, an in and out that's all no big shakes not nice long needle with a sharp point and I'm using at this particular moment I'm using three strands but I think I possibly might increase that because if you look carefully it doesn't actually show a great deal okay so I might increase that now I'm also going to 
probably add a few French knots. Uh, sorry, not French knots, cross stitches. Now I will just very, very briefly do this. In the back, from the back of the fabric, nice knot over there. And we're going to slant it. Now in your head you're going to imagine you're doing a box. So you're going to slant this over to the corner of this box here. Down there. To the other point, And then across to that point. Okay, now you can do that the other way round. Now, because we're doing textile art, don't get worried, don't get hung up about doing these neatly um, and don't get worried about the technical aspect. You just need how to do a French, um, oh gosh, how to do um, a cross stitch, that's all. But in time you might find you want to do it that way. You might want one leg that way or that big. And you might want one even bigger, depending on what you're designing and what you're using. You can do your cross stitch however you please, right down there. So here, see, they're all crosses. So it depends on you. Okay, that would be nice just to carry that on and see what happens see what happens there but anyway that's cross stitch so I will be incorporating that and as soon as I have finished because I'm actually going to sew these individually as motifs and then put them onto the background because the background the weaving is too thick to do this all the way through so that is why I'm doing them individually one at a time and then they'll be applied appliqued onto the weaving okay so i'll get back to you shortly after i've done that so they're all finished now what i've actually done i've made another set of fish and stars on here it's just one star and one fish but when i put them onto the weaving um they just got lost so i as i say i have got made another set and you can see them here now I've put beads on them all. Uh, I just going to make this bigger. So cover your eyes for a second. That's better. Right, I have put beads on them all along the centre for a little bit of texture. The buttons that you can see are from the shirt. So those are the shirt buttons that go with the background fabric here. Um, no legs as I said the, the legs and the feet will be embroidered on here I've put some just a smattering of um, sequins on each star just to give the idea that they're twinkling stars so each one now those two are the same same background colors um, they've been put on different colors background apart from these two but I thought these two would unify if I had them space sort of like this because they're the same backgrounds they might they might unify the compos composition like that. so I'll have that there now these obviously fish and star so the stars in the sky fish in the sea um, Let me push that up. Oh, I'm not sure about the fish like that. Now this was to um, go with the fish, just to just to unify that a little bit. So let me have a look at the the stars need to go up there. I'm not keen on the fish like I don't know, even know about the stars there. Let's move that up slightly. We need to avoid the ends here because then that will make it difficult to take off and um, to carry on, to line it. So I'm going to pull the stars down a little bit like that. The fish, I'm not, I'm not keen on the fish like that. 
let me have another look at the fish you know fish could come like that and maybe oh 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 yeah yeah I like that the fish can go in that shape right so I'm going to just play around with this for a couple of minutes just to make sure I don't want to overthink it but I think I think so what I will do now I'm going to pin these um no I should pin them one at a time I'll do them one at a time I will take a little sketch of this or take a photograph because that is how I want it. I'll probably take a photograph of this and refer to it and then take these off and do these one at a time. And I think I might start with this one. So I will put a pin in there. That can go there. Now the stitch that I will probably use at the moment I'm playing with the idea of cross stitch so I might do the cross stitch and I might do it in yellow I've got the hankering to do it in yellow I introduce yellow here into the fish eyes fish eyes and the bird eye here and I quite liked it so and that, there is a little bit of yellow up here up here um, but apart from that, that's more um, mustard colour. So I, I might introduce another colour, and I think that colour will be yellow. Although I'm not sure actually if black might look best. So anyway, I've got a few decisions to make. And I will, next time you see this, hopefully these will be in place. In <coughs> so the applique has now been apply to the background fabric I make this a little bit bigger just so you can see it more clearly now with regards to the bird I've decided not to put the feet and the legs on I did start doing it and I thought no it was getting lost in the background anyway so it didn't seem to serve any purpose and these these two warp threads here give the impression of legs anyway now if you can ignore those two <laughs> otherwise it looks as if he's got four legs but the two long ones there give the impression that he does actually have legs so i'm calling it finished now um it's been hanging for about, oh maybe for about two hours and i've been looking at it thinking does it need um a dark stitch around here and I don't think so I think anything now would just be a waste of time you can act just about see the the contrasting yellow here of the slow stitch around all the shapes let me see if I can get that a little bit bigger yeah just a tiny bit bigger you see the yellow slow stitch around here um around here i think you get the the idea that there is slow stitch all the way around those now so i should make that a little bit smaller and then you can see it in its entirety or not <laughs> so i'm quite pleased with that i think it actually looks better in real life than it do, does on the screen because here the shapes are really well defined then they don't seem to be so well defined on the screen but hopefully um, the next part where I add the sides and the top and the bottom will actually complement all what's going on here okay so the next thing to do is always the headache a little bit of a headache when doing this and that is to remove it now from the frame now I could actually un unhook it all but I'm not going to do that I'm just actually going to cut right the way through the threads you see these here I could unhook all the threads there but I'm not I'm just going to cut right the way through um, oh my goodness so 
But now after I've done that, they will then be tied up. If I had a nice, a longer pair of scissors, I could do it quick, quicker. Right, let's see how we get on here. Mm -hmm. Right. So that came off quite easy. Once I'd snipped the ends here, these just fell off. And look how nice they've fallen off. It's almost tempting just to put a dowel through there and have that as a hanger hanging. But I'm not going to do that. And at the moment, I'm not even going to tie these off because this end, well, both ends, will be encased in fabric. So if I work very carefully with this end, it should stay as it is at the moment. I have a piece of calico here. I'm just going to find the centre. On the centre of the calico, just so I get it with centre here, which is roughly around about there, I think. And I'm going to place that on there. And that just ensures that I get an, e an equal amount of calico over here and here because I really need that. Now this is going to be pinned down and then I'm going to tack it. I'm hoping I won't have to undo all these knotty bits that I can actually work round them. So I'm going to have a try anyway. So, oh it's upside down isn't it? There, there you go. So I'm now going to pin all this and then I'll tack it down and then I'll get back to you with the next stage which will be putting the sides on but I've tacked along here along the top and also along the bottom keeping the threads the warp threads here and at the top lying flat so that will make it easy easy now to machine straight through with the sewing machine the same here. Now say the sewing machine, if you haven't got a sewing machine you can easily do the, the next step by hand. You don't need a sewing machine for any of this. So that's nicely into position now, it isn't going anywhere. The top and the bottom and the sides will be trimmed after the next step which is to put the frame around it. Now I always love doing the frame looks like a log cabin but it isn't log cabin now I changed my mind about the backing fabric I changed it from this to this because I felt that this not this particular strip but the same fabric I, th I, I think it would have been too much mm, or would it no, I've made a decision now. Yeah, so I've changed it from that to this. Now, what I will do next is machine sew the top and the bottom in position. So that will be edge to edge here. Then I will machine sew along there. So it flips back like that. Okay, and I'll do exactly the same to the bottom so I'll do now these strips have been attached and they were really easy to machine sew down uh, especially considering how thick this is but I've decided to leave that I'm not going to trim that at the moment I've pressed it flat and I think I'm going to leave it because if I make it any shorter I might weaken some of these threads and they might unravel so I'm quite happy at the moment to leave that and it doesn't seem to be um, having any bulk I thought it might be a little bit um, bulky there but it isn't and it's the same this end as well that end looks quite neat I think that looks quite lovely so I'm leaving those now the next thing to do is to look at the sides and do exactly the same with the longer pieces now you need a piece this time the length from here from that end or oh, I'm going to make this smaller 
Um, see if I can get more of that in. Right. That might be better now. Right. So this piece, the side pieces, will go from here to there. Okay. So all we're going to do is put this on the edge here edge to edge if you can see that edge to edge all the way along there and machine sew down now when you're doing this if you have a patterned fabric like um, let me stretch over if you have a patterned fabric like this this you will put right sides down you'll put the right side of the fabric down edge to edge and machine it so when you open it up you've got the right side looking at you okay but with a check with this there isn't a right and a wrong side so it doesn't matter which way I I sew this down but I'm going off now and I'm going to sew this down edge to edge from the top right the way along the edge to the bottom and I'm going to take the sides are on as well now so the all the what I call the frame is now on and I have trimmed all the way around taking off the surplus calico and the bits around the edge so that is done almost not quite but almost so I'm just going to put this out the way right the next thing I'm going to do is make a frill a boho frill for this to go along the edge here so I need a strip of fabric just a band the same length now this fabric that I'm about to use and all the, the bits you're going to see in a minute are all leftovers from the weaving I um, cut or tore too many and been, uh, been left with lots over now all I'm going to do with the leftovers is fold say three over maybe four depending on how thick your fabric is fold them over and then all together and these raggy bits are getting in the way right if you can get rid of your raggy bits it makes it just a little bit easier all those cotton threads right so I'm going to fold these like so and pin them okay pin them like this now you can't you can't tell on the fa this strip here whether that's the right side or the wrong side once again it's check and it's the same either side but this would be the right side of your strip so you're going to put all your pieces in half along there all the way along the end there I did change actually the length of that um, I decided to make one longer just in case and what, so that is actually longer than the one that you saw so that was machine sewn they've all been machine sewn here And then I have pressed that open. I'm done. <clears throat> now we're going to put the right side of this, of the band here, against the right side of the bottom of our bag front. So, and just pin these edge to edge, right sides together, edge to edge, and just pin them all the way along. <clears throat> this will be machine sewn in um, later so don't worry about that for the minute but just pin them two together like so okay now we're going to put the handles in at the same time so we're just going to pop these out the way three inches from the end um, what have we got here one two three one two three yeah three inches from the end we're going to put our handles now the handles I'm using are actually shirt bands complete with the buttonholes you see the buttonholes here now if you haven't got anything like this you can easily make them from 
the bits of weaving that's over and all you would do is you'd sew two together right sides to right sides two together either side and then you would pull them in to the right side so that would be quite easy or you could take a wider piece of fabric like this one a wider piece and you could fold it in half like this and just sew down here and then pull it through to the right side and you have your strip easy no no secrets there very easy to do but I am using button bands you might find other bands so three inches from the end so we've got one two three I'm going to put right side right side of the fabric to right side of this about the three inch mark and pin that as well and do the same the other end three inches from there so that will be one two three about there I'll take that thick bit off so three inches from here one two three and pin that together lovely and while I do that I should take the back pop that to one side for the minute and now I'll get the back so I'm going to do the same here right now there isn't a right and a wrong side here I'm going to put the hands along this side as well now so we know this is now the, the same size as the other one so we're okay to go three inches one two three um, now there is a right and a wrong here because of the buttonholes that's the right side so right sides together one two oh, let's move that down a little bit so we've got one one two three inches there pop that here now I'm going to cut that bit off because that's been turned over and it will be too thick to to run under the sewing machine now these these button bands are exactly the same length which is always good if you have a bag to have the handles the same length so this end as well three inches one two three and that one will go there let's make sure that is the same now we have the band here the frill the band from the frill at the bottom waiting to be machine sewn on and now we're going to have the lining which will go over the handle which is waiting to be sewn on and this will be pinned in place as well I'll just make sure that is the right size mm -hmm. Ooh, only just only just so good now pin this all the way across making sure the handles are flat there we go and now this is ready to be machine sewn as well so the lining is in place and I'm going to machine sew now across there and across the bottom here and by machine sewing, sewing across here I'm going to capture the, the, the handles as well and what I will do when it comes to the handles I will go over them a couple of times with the machine sewing just to make sure that they're really secure so I'll be off now and I'm going to machine sew now so this is the back finished and I did go over the handles about three or four times I'm not sure if you can see that so 
the handles are well and truly secured you can just see here some of the stitching where I've, I've gone over oh maybe there as well so they're nice and secure so we have the back now and the front um sorry the back with the lining and at this stage i could still use either or for the front or the back so i'm not totally sure it will be the blue uh, for the back and that for the lining but we'll see but there we are that's as far as we've got with the back so the back the handles and the lining okay i'm going to make that small again so you can see it better lovely so there we go with the back put that pop that up the way now i'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see this now this is the front did exactly the same so we have the lining here so that sewn down nicely firmly so that is the lining the handles have been sewn on in the same way as I've just shown you for the back so that is now the inside this is the outside with the contrasting handles which match some of the fabric here there and here we have the frill so that is the frill so that is the front I'll turn it round here and you might get a better idea there we go and handles that's my clock again going off I think that might be the third time for the hour <laughs> it still hasn't got any better at telling the time unfortunately I don't think it will now but there we go so that's the front handles and the lining now where it gets really interesting we're now going to sew the bag up the front and the back up so we get a bag now at this point I'm going to have to work out what do, what do I want for the back do I want the red oh or do I want the blue Oh gosh, mm -hmm. see I do go towards red an awful lot, shall I be brave and have a red back, yes I think I'm going to be brave, hang on a minute, let's, let's be decided actually, no I'm going to have a blue back because if I don't then that makes the band back to front, although that wouldn't matter really would it, no no no. I set out to have a blue back. I'll have a blue back. Right sides together and starting off at the center which will be the opening match the seams there it's important that those seams are matched so match those seams you don't have to open them like you would do in dressmaking so you can leave them quite flat but do match those seams because now that is your guide for matching up everything else so just pin those two so that's fine and then we're going to pin all the way around keeping the handles out the way so they're not on the edges otherwise you could machine sew those in now yeah. along the back seam leave an opening of about say four four inches should do nicely you don't want to machine sew along there you need an opening and i always put my pins along there slant wise and that is telling me that when i get to the slanted pins to stop and that will be the gap we need for pulling the bag into the right side now we're going to do the same here but not leave the gap so we're going to match the seams here now before we get to the end make sure that's nice and flat before we get to the end we're going to push the frill inside so push the 
all the stra straggly bits, all these strands inside, but keep them away from the edge, the edge of the bag, the edges here. Otherwise, you could risk machine sewing them into the seam. So once they are nice and flat, I'm going to pin them out, out of the way. One pin there and one pin here just to keep them away from that seam. Lovely, just like that. Pull them down so they're not going to get caught into that, that edge either. And then you're going to bring this, the line in, down and just as you did before at the other end you're going to pin and then that will be ready for machine sewing just make sure these are out of the way that feels a bit bumpy there so I need to be aware of that, that they, they're liable to jump up into the seam and now I'm going to machine sew all the way round but leaving the gap in the side open so here's the fun bit now we're going to pull it into the right side so we take all the pins out which I've started doing there and we we'll find the gap where's the gap here now it's handy if your gap the gap that you leave is hand size so you can get your hand in and out so when you do your gap just bear in mind the width from there to there and make your gap the same size because it makes it so much easier um, to get to pull things in the right side if you can get your hand in there and give and um, help it out like so so we just pull these corners out as well Oh, no, that was easy. Right, let me have something. That bone folder might do this. So just pull the corners up. Lovely. Lovely. There we go, they're out. Now, let's see what's going on down this, this end. Oh, so far, so good. You can see where the line in meets here. And around the back, got that nicely. Oh, this is always a worrying minute to see what you've got caught in the seam. Just get rid of some of those straggy bits. Ah, oh, where's the bone folder? Let's see if we can pull those. Oh, where's that gap? Right, I'm just going to see now about pulling the gaps out. Oh, nothing's caught cool in the seam, apart from a few bits of thread, but, um, no. Oh, I mean, they're not perfect. <laughs> they are slightly rounded, but um, I don't think that's going to notice once the frill's down. Now, I need to sew this up. I, normally, I would do that by... Um, I'd over sew that but I'm going to do that by machine just going to do a row of stitching along there and then I'll press it it needs a good press and a top stitch along here so the first thing to do is to machine sew that so I've machine sewn it along there and I'm just going to push the lining into the bag now corner to corner and then straighten up the top here and the next thing to do is to machine sew I'll press that and then I'm going to machine sew all the way around the edge at the top you could actually do that with a decorative stitch which would look nice, perhaps a herringbone or even a chain, a little bit of slow stitching. And there's an idea. I'm going to 
play that by ear and I'll give it a press and then see, decide on a stitch. And here it's done. It's finished. Top stitch all the way around the edge here. So once again over the handles which has made them just that little bit more secure. Lining in and it's a good fit the lining. Um, it's quite a substantial tough little bag actually. So that is all done. Handles, uh, um, front's done, frill. So that is it. Unfortunately I can't get all of that into the screen but hanging up on the kitchen door after pressing it, it does look very very nice. I'm really pleased with it. I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit because we haven't quite finished. I can hear you saying, but what about the frill? What about trimming the frill? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So uh, just a little bit of a close-up. Now you can, yeah, the, the top stitch in there is more visible. Back. Just run it down the front first and then I'll show you the back. Do it very gently because of your eyes and the frill more oh, that is quite a substantial frill now for me these the shirt bands work very nicely for me um, as a shoulder bag I'm, I'm only five foot two and a half and um, it, it's quite a nice size for me perhaps if you're taller you might make want to make the handles a little bit longer um, and once again if you're shorter you might want to make the handles a little bit shorter but for five foot two and a half they're just ideal and that's my son's shirt right there we go now this is the moment I've actually been dreading the <laughs> I'm sorry about that they're trimming it so I would really love to leave it like that but I know I can't it would be far too long but I just love this effect some short and some long but some are very very long so I'm going to have a look up here and I'm going to do it somewhere betwe between a short one I've got a short one here and let's say a medium one so I still get the raggy edge but at the moment yeah that's a nice length okay I'll make them just a little bit longer than the shortest ones on here maybe this length maybe that length can I push that along just a little bit maybe this length yeah that's quite a nice length I'm going to be guided by by that but then that's a nice oh for goodness sake no 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 I've made, I've made a decision let's stick to it I don't really want like um a fringe do you remember your mum cutting your fringe when you were at school oh my goodness and it was as straight as a ruler and you'd have to go in with this fringe just above your eyebrows and oh how I used to dread those days bless her I wish she was still around to cut my fringe now and I wouldn't complain honestly just for another hour with her so she could cut my fringe and we could have a quick little chat but anyway that's another story I'm sure a lot of you can empathize with that but if my mum saw this she'd immediately want to cut it straight like the fringe she used to do with my my hair right there we go we've got Christmas one there and here right now how's that looking it's still got the raggy look I was very tempted to string some um, beads I've got a pot of beads here I was very tempted to string some beads amongst um, among these as well oh my goodness see it's knowing when to stop isn't it now 
I suppose it depends on the purpose of the bag. I mean, obviously, I won't be taking this to my local Asda and filling it up with baked beans and a cooked chicken. So, so I could put these on. Oh, no, 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 no. Too close for Christmas. Christmas. Um, to to um, sort of waste time worrying about beads, she says. Settling down this afternoon to do some bead work. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to call that finished now. I have cut quite a lot off. And, but it's still um, retained the baggy boho look. And I love that. I really love that look. So there we are. So, as always, when we do our work face to face and on YouTube on these tutorials or get togethers I like to see them more as get togethers um, we have come a long way from initial inspiration from George Brack some will say Brack but I say Brack um, we've come a long way from our friend George and um, I think he would like this I think so. Anyway, take care everyone. It's only a couple of weeks now to Christmas, but I will try to get another video out. Thank you for all your support. Thank you very, very much, and I do appreciate it. And I wish you a very, very peaceful afternoon. And I'm going to have one because I'll be beading. So I will see you on Facebook. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.